What's up YouTube, Capital G here, talking about Madoche in this video and why the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! community has got to start putting some respect on the name of the cutest meta deck in the game. And yes, I am a part-time rapper. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. It's just instinctual at this point. Anyways, if you guys like discussion videos like this, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. Otherwise, YouTube ain't gonna show this video to nobody and we don't want that. We want to help out the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, let's talk about Madoche because I feel like I have personally been championing this deck, but for the most part, it's probably been going on deaf ears. Anytime I talk about Madoche, I speak glowingly about it. I always note that there is a potential one card plus 11 in this archetype and that I believe Madoche has one of the highest ceilings in the entire meta game. I think that the deck is super strong. I think it's turning code fixed a lot of the issues that the archetype has but i still don't really feel like it garners the same type of respect as other decks decks that in my opinion it's significantly better than i'll give you guys an example when i put madoche on my top five best decks of the format, I mean, a lot of people in the comment section just scoffed at the notion of Madoche being meta. And I was like, yo, what about the new cards in Eternity Code? They're so good and they're so strong for Madoche. And all I got is, oh, come on, Cap G. What about Shadows and Heroes and Burning Abyss? And all those decks are better than Madoche. And uh, I think it's starting to come to fruition that Madoche is a legitimate contender. So if you guys are unaware, Pro Play Games games hosted a tournament on duelingbook.com over the weekend. This tournament had, I believe, 250 players. I actually watched a good amount of uh, the day one and a lot of the day two on the Twitch live stream. In this tournament, uh, it was eight rounds of Swiss, which led into a top 16 cut on Sunday. And a lot of people probably didn't think much of Madoche. It wasn't a deck on the radar of a lot of the duelists in the tournament until you got the day two and you realize in a field that was dominant dominated by Animancipators in the El Dorado control deck, Madoche had two players in the top eight in the quarterfinals. And that, that to me is pretty damn impressive. Now, this wasn't the biggest tournament the world's ever seen, nowhere near a YCS or anything like that, but it was a respectable regional level event in terms of just participants. And there were a lot of great players. I'm talking people who have topped YCSs. You maybe even had a couple of YCS winners in there. And I think that this was kind of like a first time test or maybe a little bit of an announcement party for the Madoche deck like hey we're here we can compete with a lot of the best meta decks and I don't know if it's because all the cards are cute or maybe because their best combo enabler is this little blonde girl in a pink dress, but I legitimately think Madoche is like top three best decks in the format and it doesn't really seem to get that respect. Can we all acknowledge Konami has pretty much been knocking it out of the park with this Madoche support. Basically every card from Reigns that Konami has given us from Madoche is actually seeing main deck play, whether it be Petting Sessor, which <laughs> I mean, let's be real in a vacuum she's probably one of the strongest cards in the entire game she is a potential plus 11 combo that can spin four cards on your opponent's side of the field non-targeting with Tierra Masu and she is also a one card OTK I honestly can't think of many cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that are as strong as her just in a vacuum you have other cards that are just pretty good like Sis Tart that card wasn't really all that when it first got announced but now it's a nice card that gives you decent protection for your spells and traps you have the new cards from Eternity Code which are both excellent whether it be Madoche Salon giving you that extra normal summon which actually one of the builds in the top eight ran a whopping three copies of so this deck definitely wanted to see that and then of course you have Madoche Promenade which gave Madoche the ability to go first I feel like that card is so important because it's already been known ever since you know uh, Petting Sessor that Madoche has been this powerhouse going second deck but Madoche always had that huge Achilles heel at least in brains that it really didn't have any legitimate plays going first now with Promenade you've kind of answered that question now you can actually make a legitimate board and you don't have to worry about auto losing 
to an evenly matched or to that just ridiculously powerful Dark Ruler No More, which right now seems to be the great equalizer. Obviously, Madoche have an answer to both of those. And, you know, Madoche has the ability to search out these cards from Mess and Gelato at any given time. And then on top of that, like Saloon actually gives you or Salon actually gives you the other card. Like it gives you Promenade for free, which is just incredible in my opinion. One of the things that I like about Madoche isn't just the fact that it can go first or second now, but it's really just the makeup of the deck. If you look at another high ceiling combo deck like Ad Emancipators, which most people probably think is the best deck in the format. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not sure that we have enough of a sample size to say if it is or isn't. But one of the things about Ad Emancipators is they don't really have a lot of main deck space for hand traps. A lot of times I don't really see a good hand trap variety when it comes to their deck. Maybe they play like one or two. Madoche isn't like that. That. Madoche has pretty much been born and bred off running tons and tons and tons of hand traps in the main deck and that's because for the most part they only need one or two cards to pop off. You can either hard draw Petting Cessor, you can get Magellan, which gets Petting Cessor and gives you the same exact thing. You can get Angeli, same play. Like half the, the monsters for the most part all just get you to Petting Cessor and then you just pop off with that. And that just gives you so much room in the main deck for you to either run these hand traps or these absolute blowout cards. I mean, look at the 50 card variants and see how many strong break your board cards there are in the main deck. We've got Donna Wrestler, Panka Tribes, Nimbiru, Cyframe Gear, Gamma, the Wing Dragon Ross, Spear Mode for goodness sakes, Mind Control, Dark Ruler No More, Cosmic Cyclone, Lightning Storm, Infinite and Permanence. Hell, we even got room for a red reboot in there. And if you look at the other build, you'll also notice that that build somehow squeezed in some copies of Super Polymerization. And you have all of these incredibly strong Break My Board cards. I just don't really see you not getting to at least a couple of them in your opening hand not to mention in the 50 card variant you do have triple pot of extravagance so even if you don't hard draw one of those cards for your opening hand there's a chance that maybe you might extravagance into some of those cards as well and your opponent might not be inclined to negate that because if your first play is just extravagance they're not going to be sure exactly what you're playing so that's one of the things that i love about madoche is you have so many powerful go second cards that it's very likely you're going to draw a couple of them to be able to destroy your opponent's established board but at the same time madoche needs so little gas to just wipe your opponent out i mean just one petting sensor is over eight thousand damage it's a couple of tier masu spins to get you know your opponent's cards off the board and even if you can't kill them because you have something or you've activated something like a Dark Ruler No More, you're probably just going to completely trash their board. They're not going to have many resources left and you can just out advantage them using the disruptions you've already drawn or again, you can get stuff like Promenade for free. So I think that this deck has got to start being respected. Madoche's is a major player and even when you're talking about forcing them to go first and you're like, well, Cap, all they have is Promenade. That's not even that big of a deal. A lot of these Madoche builds are either main decking or they're side decking in the artifact engine the dinosaur players did this last format and it looks like the madoche players are basically taking a cue from them so if you are playing a deck like animancipators and you think you're going to 200 IQ them by forcing them to go first and just playing around maybe one disruption, you might end up losing the duel with just the artifact side. And actually, let me talk about the Wing Dragon Ross Spear mode for a second because I feel like if Madoche players can incorporate this into their main deck and not see any significant consistency problems, then we're really, really going to have to start taking this deck seriously because we know that the Wing Dragon Ross Spear mode is one of the best break your board cards in the entire game. I honestly think it's right there that s tier level with cards like dark rule no more or evenly match but there's always been a major sacrifice and that's usually if you do spear mode your opponent while you get to break their board for the most part you don't get a normal summon you don't essentially get to do whatever it is that your deck wants to play especially if you're playing a combo deck you're probably not going to be able to combo however madoche might not have that problem number one we already know that their best combo enabler and petting sensor well she doesn't require a normal summon you just 
just special summon her and then you can just go about your plays and also now that madoche has another card that or they have a way of of essentially getting another normal summon i don't think that's going to be that big of a problem in fact maybe that's why you're seeing three copies of madoche salon in this particular build and to me i think that's pretty damn horrifying if i'm an animancipator player who probably has maybe four negates on board not including appaloosa having multiple negates but if i'm getting spear moded i'm probably not expecting to die that turn but then if my opponent just goes petting or they activate salon and then go angeli i mean that's just got to be the worst feeling in the in the world to know that one card basically get rid of all your negations and they're still going to be able to get that you know 81,000 or 80 8100 damage from petting sir and easily be able to kill you so the point of this video is that madoche is a very real deck it takes almost no gas to be able to otk your opponent and just whack their entire field clean using things like tiramisu the deck can go first or second effectively and really when it comes to its natural ability to go second it's not just simple hand traps that you have to play around not like the measly effect veilers and ash blossoms to cards that really are good against everything but not super impactful they're running just absolute blowout cards i mean look at these builds and see how many completely blowout disruptive cards that they're playing i think that uh, a lot of people went into this format thinking madoche was on the same tier as your heroes and burning abyss and shadows and i didn't think much of any of those decks but i always thought madoche was just significantly better and i think that that's starting to kind of show itself now madoche could ultimately fall off an island but i think it's up there i'm not saying that it's as good as Adam emancipators but I think it's probably better than a lot of the other combo decks in the game right now. I think that it is one of the premier go second decks in the game and I think you got to respect it. Anyways, whatever you guys think about Madoche, do you think that this is a fluke? Do you think Madoche is real? Leave that in the comment section below. I still think it's a top five meta deck and uh, I'm not coming off that opinion unless something drastically changes. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.